स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया module 2 of uh, these uh, series of video lectures on cultural studies we um, completed the first module of uh, which we will do um, a quick recap uh, we recall that in module 1 which was essentially an introduction to cultural studies um, we devoted two lectures to understanding cultural studies this entailed a definitions of culture of cultural studies um this entailed looking at the scope of cultural studies uh, this entailed looking at kindred fields like sociology anthropology and how these are different from cultural studies and um we looked at you know um the crux of cultural studies as um you know uh, as a a, a political practice in the sense that you one does cultural studies with a view to uh, forming policies that would bring about change so uh, we did um we the two lectures on understanding cultural studies and then we uh, following chris barker we argued that uh, we cannot uh, you know uh, it is it is not profitable or uh, it is not wise to um uh, to leave out the scientific uh, you know the the contributions from science and we looked at um evolution and culture we looked at evolutionary psychology and we recall the five principles of evolutionary psychology we looked at uh, the origins of the modern mind okay and we looked at an analogy between um cultural transmission and genetic transmission using mims and comparing or rather drawing the analogy from genes in the theory of memetics then we went on to look at three theoretical schools of um uh, theoretical schools of cultural studies uh, with the caveat that there are other schools which will be dealing with we shall be dealing with when we look at um you know uh, look at other modules because though the, for instance when we speak of gender that's when feminism would come in as a theoretical school so just to give you an example okay of how uh, people theorize uh, uh, regarding culture we took up these three structuralism marxism and post structuralism okay so we devoted 10 lectures uh, in module 1 and uh, quickly to uh, look at what we did uh, in the last um, lecture that is on um, on post structuralism we looked at uh, this branch of philosophy called epistemology and we said that epistemology is a theory of knowledge that looks into the origin or sources the limits uh, or the boundaries and the state or status of knowledge and we saw how this you know going back to epistemology is a key strategy in post structuralism we also looked uh, at uh, belief and knowledge and we uh, said that in cultural studies or in you know not in cultural studies only in epistemology sorry um belief is seen a knowledge is seen as belief that has been justified okay so uh, belief by itself uh, you know very generally speaking does not qualify to be knowledge unless it is justified then we saw that unlike structuralism which looks at meaning um as differential and relational and yet yet says that there can be stable meaning what happens in post structuralism is that meaning owing to the very argument of structuralism that meaning is um diff you know differential and relational post structuralists hold that meaning is on account of this meaning is endlessly deferred so there is what we call the impossibility of uh, arriving at meaning in a final sort of a way okay so meaning 
owing to the fact that it is by reference uh, 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 to relations in a system, a meaning will always carry traces of other words in the whole differential system. So, we looked at certain terms from Jacques Derrida, the French philosopher and these terms are deferral, substitution and supplementation. When transposed to cultural studies, uh, we could say following post structuralism that identity okay, is continually re, uh, you know, uh, recreated in the sense that identity is not a stable as you would have it in structuralism, but identity is always a shifting and it is contingent. Okay. So, there is a provisionality of identity looked at from the post structuralist point of view in, in cultural studies. Then uh, we looked at Foucault and the important term discourse, we found that discourse gives uh, you know uh, uh, has the power to name, okay. discourse can create a, what we call a subject and today's lecture will be devoted solely to subject subjectivity or and subject position. Okay. So, we talk about subjectivity in um, as the you know um, is a topic of the first lecture in module 2. Module 2 as you know is devoted to key concepts. Well, um, culture as maps of meaning was seen under post structuralism as uh, achieving just a temporary stability through discursive practices something that is not there once and for all. And we looked at later Foucault who gives us uh, you know a way around this problem, it is not that we are caught, we are slaves of uh, these uh, you know discourses and he, sa he says in his later work that self construction, reflection and reinvention uh, are the very tools with which we can recreate ourselves. And then finally, we saw that meta narratives and the global regimes give place to micro narratives and local regimes. Well, now we come to module 2 and as I said uh, we are going to look at certain key concepts that go into it is important for us you know to know these concepts, it is important for us to uh, kind of lay, lay them bare, it is important for us to talk about uh, key concepts and to see how various uh, practitioners, various theorists, various scholars have looked at these key concepts. So, we find a heterogeneity of a meaning and definitions and it is important for us to look into them. Now, to begin with what is a concept or what are concepts? Well, we could say that concepts are ideas, okay. concepts are ideas and there is always a certain you know uh, abstract quality about concepts. If a concept has to be applicable you know in, in different situations, if uh, you know the, a certain kind it cannot be too concrete because a concept has to lend itself okay a concept has to lend itself uh, uh, to various situations so a certain as i said a degree of abstractness uh, is uh, you know um, uh, uh, is something that you uh, that a concept will always have so concepts are seen as ideas and abstractions and finally they are seen as units of knowledge units of knowledge or of meaning right so units in the sense that concepts become the building block building blocks of uh, any knowledge system in order to have knowledge in order to be able to say something intelligible and further applicable to other things and situations uh, we would need concepts as the basic units or building blocks therefore le let's look at you know uh, a few of the concepts that we shall be dealing with in uh, uh, one of course is subjectivity, the other is representation, uh, we also look at ideology, we look at power, we looked at power in post structuralism uh, and in the first uh, two lectures um, in the last module, but we shall come back to it in a more detailed sort of way and we look at identity. There may be a couple of other you know as I deem fit a um, couple of other uh, uh, other concepts that I might bring in in this module. Fine, so we know uh, we know that our topic, uh, the topic for today's lecture, is subjectivity. Okay, uh, what is subjectivity? Subjectivity is basically the process, or define it as a process of being 
and becoming for any person. Okay? Being in the sense you are a person, but the fact that you are a person is not just a given for or, you know, once and for all. Uh, even if you look at yourself as a person, uh, uh, you know, who's arrived today, you know, that person as the, uh, there are certain processes. So here, this word becomes important. Becoming, there are certain processes that have gone into making you as a person. Okay. So uh, for the time being, we define at least, uh, you know, as a beginning move, we define subjectivity as the process of being and becoming a person. Okay. And we'll look at this. Uh, closely in the next few slides. Now, let us first take uh, you know a quotation which was really um, uh, so phenomenal in the sense that you know it's such a so phenomenal in, in when it first came up, it was so striking. This is from the French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir and her book The Second Sex. The Second Sex obviously talks about women, and in that book, uh, this is one of the most celebrated sentences in that book. She says, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. And look at, uh, this is, this in a way sums up really what subjectivity is. One is not born, but rather becomes a woman. You may think that, well, when a girl child is born, she is a woman. So, how does she become a woman? Okay? In this whole process of becoming, see, this is a process, right? In this whole process of becoming, and in the, her study of this process of becoming, Simone de Beauvoir is telling us that there are outside of a woman. Okay? Now, in, this is in the case of feminism, but it applies everywhere. Outside of a woman, there are certain social and cultural um, processes that make a woman. Okay? So, biologically, one may be born with, uh, you know, um, as a girl child, but the processes, so woman is not simply a uh, a sexual identity, it is a gender identity. Okay? So, as a woman, one has a certain subjectivity. Right? So, they, and this subjectivity is not simply as we saw earlier, look at you know, not just uh, you know, a question of being, but it is also a question of becoming. Hence, this one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. Uh, these are two terms, well, uh, we can also un understand subjectivity. Uh, vis a vis or well in opposition to objectivity. Okay? Uh, you will uh, you uh, uh, will uh, will um, you know you will understand that uh, objectivity is uh, usually given a lot of importance. Objectivity is seen to be a virtue and subjectivity is not seen to be a virtue. Science for instance, science till recently was seen as something objective in the sense that if you are a scientist, you do not bring your inner world, your inner feelings, your inner experiences into the study of science. But no, today, especially after the uncertainty principle, uh, especially after you know work done by uh, so many philosophers like Bruno Latour for instance, okay, you cannot say that you are completely objective as a scientist. Okay? So, subjectivity becomes uh, today very important even as I said even in the study uh, of science okay? and uh, you know what goes on in the laboratory. Right? So, the observer in observing a phenomenon brings uh, uh, you know a certain picture into it. So, subjectivity then as I said even in, in science and technology okay, is uh, uh, you know, is a concept, is a key concept that has come into understanding and revising our understanding of the scientific practices. Well, I will quickly would like to look at this, uh, you know, uh, uh, further look at this, and this is from the Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Um, the terms, now let us read this the terms objectivity and subjectivity in their modern usage generally relate to a perceiving subject that is a person and a perceived or unperceived object. Look at, let's look at it a piece. Objectivity and subjectivity is about perception. Okay? And who perceives a subject that is normally talking about a person, a human being here. There is a subject that perceives okay? and there is an object that you perceive. 
So, they, it is a division that you create, I am watching or looking at or perceiving something else. Okay? It seems as if I am completely removed from that object. So, the object is something that Sirika Dystermia presumably, the object presumably, we only presume that it exists independent of the subject's perception of it. In other words, the object would be there as it is even if no subject perceived it. Okay? So, in philosophy for instance, we have this whole debate about is there a world out there? Is there a reality out there outside of, a, of our perception? Okay, there are uh, so many, uh, so many uh, uh, views on this, so many opinions on this, so many uh, theoretical, you know, you know, there are so many arguments about this. Hence, objectivity is typically associated with ideas such as reality, truth and reliability. And we saw in our last lecture uh, that this is a problematic issue in the sense that reality, truth and reliability as something being out there outside of us uh, is uh, you know, uh, is a very contentious issue, right? Post-structuralism, remember, would say that it is, uh, you know, these are li uh, cre linguistic creations, right? We perceive the world as a particular subject through our discourses, and discourses are what? Discourses are, in the ultimate sense, these are linguistic exercises, okay? So, uh, um, the point in bringing here this here is that it is generally assumed that there is an object and there is a subject, right? As an ob and there is an objectivity about the object, but which is there even if you are not looking at it. Derrida, then let us look at what Derrida says. Derrida says, and he acknowledges the importance of subjectivity and the subject. Derrida says, uh, the question of the subject and the living who is at the heart of the most pressing concerns of modern societies. Okay? So, the subject and the who, the who, who is watching, okay? who is reading, who is perceiving, this today is at the heart of one, some of the most pressing concerns of modern societies. So, we know that this is rendered a problematic issue, something which is a key concept, but on, on, uh, on, on this concept, so many people have thrown light on it and are continuing to do so. So, when we now there are three terms that I want you to look at. Uh, when we look, when we say subject, okay, when we say, uh, the moment we say subject, there are kindred terms, you know. Some people say subject, a subject is a self. Some people say a subject is a human being, okay, or human or human nature. So, these are terms that are related, okay, human, self, and subject. Now, it is important for uh, to us to to look at the thin, uh, you know, uh, differences among these terms. For instance, when you say human and when you say subject, what is happening? The difference here is, when you say human, we refer to universal, something unchanging nature. For instance, human nature. The moment, moment we say human nature, we uh, are, uh, you know, in effect, we are saying that there is something called human nature, which is applicable to all human beings, something that is unchanging, something that is universal. You know, this is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, deep structures from evolutionary studies would tell you. For instance, the eight emotions that we have, right, uh, and the strongest of them, fear, for instance, is part of human nature, okay. There is no doubt that this sort of thing needs to be acknowledged, of course. When you look at deep down, you look at the deep structures, definitely there is something called human nature. But subject is not what not understood as human nature. There is a difference. Okay? So, if human is universal, unchanging, subject is immanent and cultural. Okay? So, um, it is important for us in the beginning to differentiate. Okay, when we will begin to talk about subjectivity, we are now going to talk about humanness or human nature in the universal. The next difference again as I said is between self and subject. Okay? Uh, many people would think that subjectivity and selfhood uh, are interchangeable. Uh, I would hasten to say that they are not exactly into, you know, the, the irreplaceable with, by each other. Okay? When we talk about self, it is held 
by many that self involves a certain interiority okay it is it is about a, about uh, about the interior uh, your interior uh, not exactly in the sense of intimate uh, uh, feelings experiences it's it's the inner world so to speak okay the inner world but when we say subject we have to understand that yes it is about our inner world but the onus or the focus is on culture to be specific it would be like this the onus is on how does culture shape us as subjects okay which in turn gives us an interior world right so there are these very uh, you know very subtle differences between human and subject self and subject okay so we ought not in the beginning these are different concepts you see self is a concept human human nature is a concept and subjectivity is a concept it is important for us to train ourselves to make these subtle divisions or distinctions among uh, various concepts well uh, i'm again quoting from chris barker and uh, this is again to do with self versus subject while subjectivity you look at this while subjectivity he says is a social and cultural accomplishment our individuality now there's another uh, fourth concept we come across so for other concepts one is subject one is human or human nature one is self and finally a fourth one individuality so subjectivity is a social and cultural accomplishment okay and individuality is understood in terms of the specific ways in which the resources of the self are arranged each of us are culturally constructed we uh, you know we are subject but we arrange them in certain ways and that is why even though the cultural situations are the same none of us is the same all of our inner worlds our inner feelings experiences etc are the result of arrangements okay how the resources of the self are arranged and i see so beautifully put here by barker that is while please look at the slide that is while we are all subject to the impress of history the particular form that we take and the specific arrangements of discursive elements are unique to each individual okay for we have all had singular patterns singular in the sense here of unique okay singular patterns of biochemistry family relations friends work and access to discursive resources okay so uh, um, remember subjectivity then is not as foucault said remember later foucault subjectivity is not something that is impressed on to you once and for all or it's not a one way traffic okay we also arrange our resources according to look at the final uh, term here according to the discursive resources that you have with you okay uh another shade of meaning of subject if you look at subject not as a noun you look at subject as a verb okay in the sense of it would mean to be subjected to mean to be subjected to okay in that in the sense of um, the way you see you talk about you know in in feudalism you talk about say vassals as or under under kings in a situation of monarchy we are the subjects and there is a king who is ruling us the king rules over his subjects in that sense to be placed under okay as a verb subjectivity entails to be placed under something so to be placed under in our sense from cultural studies now all well you've looked at discourse you've looked at um, uh, you know you have looked at meaning uh, so it will be easy for you to understand this okay so we are placed under certain regimes of discourse to understand okay so we are subjected to discourse uh another quotation here from nick mansfield you can look up this uh, very uh, very interesting book uh, theories of the self from freud to haraway is talking about how different theorists psychologists and uh, you know well people from various fields have looked at the idea of 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 uh, uh, self okay a uh, mansfield says the word subject therefore proposes that the self is not a separate and isolated entity but one that operates at the intersection look at the words that i have given in bold and in red operates at the intersection of general truths and shared principles look at the two words general truths and shared principles 
it means simply that these come from our society, social arrangements and from our culture. So, subject is not an isolated entity. You may have, uh, you may have an inner world, but you have to understand where that inner world is coming from. It is not uh, solipsistic, it is not an isolated separate, being separate from social processes. Okay? So, subject is self that comes about uh, through the operation of general truths and shared principles from our socio-cultural arrangements. Now, Barker therefore, now, as I said we are going to look at various um, ways of looking at subject from different persons or uh, from different scholars. So, in this case Barker here, Barker looks at subjectivity as in three dimensions. One is subjectivity is a condition of being a person. Subjectivity refers to the processes that go into the construction of the person. And Barker also includes the self part of it. Okay? He says, subjectivity is not just the condition or the state of being of a person, subjectivity is not just the processes, subjectivity is also the very experience of being a person, that inner world that we are talking about. Okay? But the inner world not as isolated, the inner world in, you know, in connection okay, to culture. So, subjectivity is the condition of being a person. It, uh, the processes that go into the making of the person, the construction of the person and it is the very experience of being a particular person. So, um, again we bring in Foucault here okay, and let us look at these uh, uh, six points from Foucault. A. Foucault says there are no universal subjectivities, there cannot be a subjectivity that is common to all of us in the you know in, in, in all senses of the term. There can be no universal subjectivities. All of our subjectivities differ. And remember why? Because we also contribute in the arrangement of the resources of the self, as we saw a while ago. Second, subjectivity is an effect of discourse. Okay? Remember we saw in our last um, uh, uh, lecture we, s we looked at the term discourse and we said that discourses are regulated ways of speaking about something and we if you recall we took the example of man and we say the when we say man there are various discourses that try to define man uh, so you know so to speak to pull man into their own discursive field and to pin man down okay um, uh, down with their own terminologies for instance religion is one discourse that would define man in a way very different from uh, some other resource, uh, uh, sorry, from other uh, other discourse, for instance, uh, uh, psychology or psychiatry, uh, economics, for instance, politics, for instance. So, all of these, uh, so to speak, have a stake really in, in, um, in defining and delineating the boundaries of what any entity is. So, subjectivity, therefore, is an effect of discourse. So, if you have a subjectivity as a religious person, okay, your subjectivity uh, that is uh, your experience and your constructedness as a religious person is an effect of the discourse of religion. Do you, do you follow? Now, that has made you, in, and in another sense, it has subjected you to the discourse of religion. Okay? Now, if you are an atheist, a person who does not believe in God, in the existence of God, your uh, position, your condition and your, uh, you see, your, your experiences as an atheist okay, are determined by the discourse of atheism. Right? So, you are uh, so to speak in that sense subjected you know, in, a, you know, in, the, in the narrow sense, in this case this is a one way traffic, you are to be completely subjected. But we also know that there is another aspect to it is that <coughs> the discursive practices or the discourses that you have that you know of, they of course do go into the making of your subjectivity, but remember we also arrange uh, in, in the manner of uh, later Foucault, we also arrange our subjectivities according to the resources that we have. And I would that is why I would think that it is good to inhabit as many discourses as you can, so that you do not fall prey to any one discourse. Okay? Coming back to the slide, uh, the subject therefore may be defined as a discursive formation. Okay? A subject 
uh, on one subjectivity is an effect of this cause and it is a formation by this cause and hence it is a discursive formation. So, the, this next point we have also uh, already taken up, this cause also subjects people to its rules. Okay. So, they remember what is a discourse? This cause is a rule bound uh, linguistic activity in the sense that there are it is a regulated way of speaking remember. So, there are certain rules you cannot go outside of those rules. So, uh, if you are subject to its rules then uh, 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 the, the subjectivity of people is a result of operating within those rules. Next it gives us subject positions we will look at this a while later. This cause subjects us creates us constructs us, gives us certain experiences and it gives us subject positions or perspectives through which we make sense of this world. Okay. Therefore, subjectivity is historically and culturally constructed. Um, Barker then comments, we have just seen what Foucault says about discourse and subjectivity and um, let us look at read uh, Barker's comments on Foucault. Okay. Barker says, Foucault attacks what he calls the great myth of the interior. Now, the interior remember the self, the interiority. Okay. Foucault says that it is a great myth. It is a myth to think that you have an interior that is isolated, okay, that is separate from any other thing, that is sort of so sacrosanct to yourself on which nobody has access or on which uh, to uh, for the formation of which nobody is, has uh, contributed. So, Foucault attacks what he calls the great myth of the interior, arguing that the subject is a historically specific production of discourse, okay. not just you know you are produced by a certain discourse, that discourse also has the imprint of history. Important, it is important to ask at which point in the historic moment, uh, you know, the moment in history has an or other what is the condition of that discourse in that moment of history. For instance, religion. Religion is a discourse which has changed from time to time. Okay. Religion, uh, there are people who have brought in reforms in religion. Uh, well, the main precepts may be the same or rather the main belief in a God, in a supernatural being may, this, may be the same, but we know for instance the Bhakti movement uh, in Hinduism. The Bhakti movement brought in uh, a, a, another aspect, the Arya Samaj movement for instance brought in another you know uh, uh, way of looking. So, at, at any historical moment then the discourse is historically specified. Okay? So, let us read it again, Foucault attacks what he calls the great myth of the interior, arguing that the subject is a historically specific production of discourse with no transcendental continuity. Okay, there is no transcendental in the sense of you know something that is uh, sort of you know uh, in all time something that is <coughs> um, extra to uh, historical and temporal um, and spatial considerations. There is uh, the no transcendental continuity from one subject position to another. Then to speak, Barker here again, to speak is to take up a pre-existent subject position and to be subjected to the regulatory power of that discourse. This is Barker commenting on Foucault as we know. In this conception, the speaking subject is not the author. This is very important. When you speak, you think that you are the author. When you write, you when somebody writes, you recognize him or her as an author. Okay? Foucault says not so. Right? The speaking subject is not the author or originator of a statement. Okay. You look at this is a very important point, the speaking subject, the one who speaks is actually not the author of his thoughts, not the author of his sentence okay. or uh, nor is he the originator of the statement. When you say a statement, you think that well it is my statement, I have uttered it, I have said something, but Foucault would say no, I would say I as a subject feel something and I am saying something. He says, no, you are not even, not only are you not the author of what you are saying, you are also not the originator of anything that you say. Why? Because it depends on the prior existence of discursive positions. This cause 
has already given you the words, the terms, the sentences, the feelings, name it. Okay? So, whatever, whatever statement you are saying, however new it may sound to you, is dependent, as it says, on the prior existence of discourse. Okay? Uh, you cannot speak outside of discourse. When, even if you bring two discourses together, you are still speaking from the pre uh, you know, uh, uh, existing structures of discourse. Now, these subject positions can be filled by virtually any individual when he formulates the statement. So, where is the concept of agency here? In a, in a strict sort of way, if you look, look at uh, you know, the point being made here, any person can say what you are saying. Any person, you know, the, these subject positions, this position talking from a certain position, this position need not be you. It can, it could be filled by any person, or virtually any, any, any individual when he formulates the statement. So, the famous, uh, you know, the famous, um, let's say, argument that this causes everything, in this, uh, uh, in a way, it does make a lot of sense. Okay? So, you speak from pre-existing discourses and so, you are not really the author of what you are saying. Okay? And in, now let us look at this, and in so far as one and the same individual may occupy in turn the same series of statements, different positions and assume uh, the role of different subjectivities. Okay? You, there is also, you know, if, if you are, if you inhabit different discourses, you can speak from this different dis discourses. In that case, you will have different subject positions. Okay? According to postmodernism, this would be a very liberatory uh, condition. Okay, that you can hop from one discourse to another and not be stuck. Here remember, it is because you are seen as somebody who is subjected to a discourse. Okay, so, there are times when you should, you know, according to this theory, you should be able to occupy in order, in, uh, you know, to release yourself from discourses. In short, as Barker says, in short, the process by which we are constituted as subjects in is one in which we are subject to social processes that bring us into being as subjects for ourselves and others. Okay? Uh, others are, are, are watching us as we make certain statements from certain discourses, that is the way they are judging us and you are doing the same for the others. Okay? So, we are subject to social processes that bring us into being. You okay, see, processes is the state of becoming which gives you the being okay, as subject for ourselves and others. Now, I would like uh, to point to uh, a quotation from Black Skin, White Masks and you have heard of Franz Fanon uh, who, look at this, uh, this quotation from Black Skin, White Masks, dirty nigger or simply look a negro. Fanon says, I came into this world anxious to uncover the meaning of things. My soul desirous to be at the origin of the world and here I am an object among other objects. Okay? So, just before this, if you look at this quotation here, that look at this, that bring us into being a subject for ourselves and others. Okay. The other who is looking at you, judging you, okay, for him or her, you are the object. Right? The person is watching you, you are, uh, is judging you, you are uh, a, a subject of study for that person. And this process of being both a subject and an object is so beautifully put uh, by Franz Fanon and this is the dilemma of anyone in an oppressive situation. You know, be he or she a Dalit uh, uh, person, be he or she a woman in certain circumstances or be he or she a black person okay? or a Hispanic uh, uh, you know, in North America for instance. Okay? So, you, there is always a feeling for the Hispanics or, 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 or you know, or for, for uh, uh, you know, let us not name any, anyone in a situation of oppression. Okay? That person uh, following Fanon, okay, that person, look at this, is anxious to uncover the meaning of things. That person has a subjectivity of his or her own. His or her soul or spirit is desirous, wants to be in the origin of the world, wants to make meaning. 
and then he says well when somebody calls me a dirty nigger or a negro i understand then that i have become an object for the other person the subjectivity of that person is cancelled out in the sense that that person now begins to think that my subjectivity is something that is being made by another person you know what we call the gaze of the other you know the my other the white man is now telling me who i am whereas i have an inner world i have a subjectivity which uh, you know uh, 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 an interiority so to speak you know it uses the word my soul interiority that also wishes to be the origin you know at the origin of meaning at the origin of the world right so i am being made an object by somebody we then look at um, judith's um, another uh, you know another uh, very uh, very seminal theories as far as uh, gender studies is concerned and gender trouble being one of her uh, you know one of her most celebrated works now judith butler says this if there is something right in bouvard's claim in ms simon de bouvard and her book the second sex published in 1949 i think okay so butler says if there is something right in bouvard's claim that one is not born but rather becomes a woman it follows that woman itself is a term in process okay why remember if you look at go back to the earlier slides we had one slide in which we said that subjectivity is you know being a subject is a process right it's a cultural process so she says that if bouvard's claim is correct that we become a woman we are not simply born a woman with all our you know behavioral uh, uh, behavioral patterns established from the day we are born she says that it follows it it logically follows that woman itself as a concept here okay as a term the term woman itself is a term in process it is not a given once and for all okay what it, it means to be a woman is something that is still still in process it uh, the meaning of which to use a written term is deferred okay the meaning is deferred and it is it differs from uh, other things in the system the meaning of woman as a concept is deferred follows that woman itself is a term in process a becoming not a being and a sense given once and for all a becoming a constructing that cannot rightfully be said to originate or to end well it is a, as a process there is no originatory originary sorry moment of woman of womanhood uh, there is no end okay as a process it's a process without a beginning and an end why without a beginning because we do not simply do not know and why without an end because it is a process that is always and will always change okay let's read it again if there is something right in bouvard's claim that one is not born but rather becomes a woman it follows that woman itself is a term in process a becoming a constructing that cannot rightfully be said to originate or to end as an ongoing discursive practice this is very important it is open the term woman is open to intervention and resignification okay uh, we have highlighted these terms right if it is a process then we can intervene if somebody tells you this is what a woman is you know it is not a process of becoming it's one of being something that is a given this is what a woman is or this is what a woman should be we can because it's a woman is a discursive uh, uh, you know it's a discourse okay uh, it's a discursive practice is put into practice we can intervene right we can sort of butt in and we can intervene and we can we can say that well this is not woman woman is much more than this or woman is very different than this okay moment i say woman i am sure you are not going to think about a woman truck driver are you going to think about a woman truck driver you are not going to think about it okay so you have to intervene and next you have to resignify okay so as an ongoing discursive practice the category woman is open to intervention from our side and it is open to resignification it is in a signification process no we have to 
because it is a process re-inscribe woman we have to uh, 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 you know make it you know to re-signify the whole processes if need be dismantle other older signifying or processes of signification okay so i think this is a, a very very semin very very important contribution uh, from judith butler there's so many other points from butler but this the intervention and re-signification possible when we look at woman and woman subjectivity as a process right that is uh, you know open to resignification and intervention right uh, therefore these are these terms now uh, which will come in in our understanding of subjectivity okay one is agency we think of ourselves as subjects right now let's look at a sent you know let's look at simply just a sentence you know from a grammatical point of view you know that a subject a sentence can be in a very elementary way divided into what two parts a subject and a predicate right a subject the predicate part of a sentence is what is said about the subject for if we say rahul threw the ball okay when we say rahul threw the ball then Rahul is a subject who is performing an action that is a verb to throw and the object is the ball, right. So, there is a certain agency, a certain doingness, okay, the subject as a doer, right. So, you feel that as a subject I have agency, as a subject I have, yeah, I have free will, okay. The the point here is that it is not so simple as it looks. It is not just a grammatical sentence we are talking about. Our, how free are we? Okay, as again, an essential question from philosophy. How free are you and I okay, to do things? And how far are our things determined? Right? So, as a subject, our free will and our agency, a complete, our idea of complete free will and complete agency is an illusion. So also uh, we would argue from cultural studies that complete determination, okay, complete determination from social cultural processes also is an illusion. Remember Karl Marx, Mar what, did, what, what did Marx say? Marx said that the relationship between the base and the superstructure, the, your relationship between the, you know, your social, uh, you know, your, your consciousness and your you know uh, which comes from social processes economic processes and your action these are you know there is a certain certain uh, you know um, there is a certain agency to it but the point is remember in our lecture on marxism we found that history has already given us so it is determined in the sense that there is the impress of history okay but there is if you, uh, there is a will in us okay so it in, even in cultural studies, it is understood as a play between determination on the one hand and agency and will on the other. Okay? So, our subjectivity is a result of determinate forces and at the same time they are uh, and at the same time uh, there is a, you know we have the freedom to make arrangements, okay? to arrange our resources. Right, yes. Uh, therefore, Barker says in making sense of cultural studies, that the constitution of the subject as conceived by cultural studies is cultural studies thinks of the subject as a discursive construction, proposes that we are cultural and political agents, and what is required is the capacity for switching these between these languages as appropriate and according to our purposes. This gives us the freedom from complete determinism. Okay? Uh, Therefore, the three disciplinary discourses are now uh, coming quickly back to Foucault, okay, uh, uh, which work through power, which is generative or productive of subjectivity are the A, the sciences, which constitute the subject as an object of inquiry, okay, the technologies of the self, whereby you and I turn ourselves into subjects, and the dividing practices, which separate the mad from the sane, the criminal from the law abiding citizen and friends from enemies. Now, this I will take up in detail, okay, since we do not have time here in detail in my lecture on power uh, and we shall talk about uh, this generation of subjectivity and these three disciplinary discourses. Okay. Therefore, quickly ending this lecture here, subject position means this, that the discourse creates a subject 
and subjects the subject to discourse. And the reader or the agent occupies the position from which the world makes sense through the specific discourses. Therefore, the subject position is a function of discourse. Okay? So, orientation, placing, obligation and foregrounding, these are you know certain terms which you can replace uh, um, subject position with, and sub rather subject position may be seen as orientation, placing, obligation and foregrounding. Okay? Now, um, quickly I would like to skip a few points which may need not be in this lecture, take it up elsewhere or let's disc uh, uh, we go to the discussion and we look at how first question, how is subjectivity seen in relation to personhood. Subjectivity is seen as both a process, uh, you know, process and uh, uh, an essence as being and becoming. Okay? And we say becoming is more highlighted here. How could we differentiate between concepts of self and subject? Self refers to a certain interiority and subject is cultural. How does Chris Barker define subjectivity as a condition? It is a process and it is an experience of being a person. Okay? Um, then uh, we, uh, we looked at Foucault's understanding of subjectivity as an effect of discourse and a, discor a discursive function and discourse also subjects us and subjectivity is historically and culturally constructed. So, the three disciplinary discourses which I said I will take up later quickly are the sciences, technologies of the self and the dividing practices. And finally, Judith Butler, how, uh, what does Judith Butler, uh, uh, and what does she have to say about sub subjectivity? When you take up women's subjectivity, she says that one following Bover becomes a woman and therefore, woman is a term in process. Okay. And finally, the, 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 the good news is we can intervene and we can re-signify what woman means. Okay. So, we, today we have looked at subjectivity uh, as a key concept and uh, there will be other concepts that we shall be looking at. Of course, these are not the only things and we uh, can't really pack subjective into, into one lecture, but my hope is that I have been able to uh, you know, make differ a differentiation between subject and human. Uh, and uh, you know uh, um, uh, and self on the one hand and also to be able to show you how cultural studies argues that subjectivity okay or experience of being a person uh, is neither a given and nor is it something stagnant you know that you can also recreate or reinvent yourself and if you can manage your subjectivity by managing the resources of the self and um, uh, kind of put your own individual unique stamp on it. Okay? So, thank you very much. The next lecture uh, we will be doing would be uh, something coming from subjectivity, something related to it and that would be identity. Thank you so much.